Mario Tamayo and Bob Nelson, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Good morning. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, it's a thrill to have the chance to chat with both of you. I've been following your work for a long time. Uh, being in the space myself as a scholar practitioner, uh, I remember years ago when I was in a, a brand, just as a grad student, uh, and my first kind of internship in a new HRD training and development role. And I, that was the first time I came across some of your work. And uh, it was so much fun back then, and I've, I've followed it uh, since then. I'm thrilled years later to have the chance to chat with both of you. Today, we're going to be tapping into both of your areas of expertise. I, I suppose you have many areas of expertise, but we're going to be talking specifically about having fun at work, how employees can take ownership over their own um, experience, how leaders can bring fun into the workplace, uh, and how we can do that even within a virtual world, since obviously we've all had to grapple with how to do that more over the past 15, 16 plus months. As we get started, I wanted to share Bob and Mario's bios with everybody. Bob Nelson, PhD, president of Nelson Motivation, Inc., is the world's leading authority on employee recognition and engagement. He's worked with 80% of Fortune 500 companies, is a senior fellow for the conference board, a top thought leader for the Best Practice Institute, and was named a top five management guru by Global Gurus. Fondly known as Dr. Bob, he has authored over 30 books on employee motivation and engagement, which have collectively sold over 5 million copies and been translated into more than 30 languages. His new book is Work Made Fun, Get done. Easy ways to boost energy, morale, and results. Mario Tamayo is a principal with Tamayo Group, Inc., a no-nonsense consulting firm specializing in leadership and organizational performance. He has more than 30 years of experience in maximizing human performance, working with organizations such as uh, Genentech, uh, MLN Pharmaceuticals, Petco, General Dynamics, and the U.S. Men's Olympic Volleyball Team. His new book is work made fun gets done with Bob, easy ways to boost energy, morale, and results. Uh, such a thrill to have both of you on the podcast today. Before we launch into the conversation, anything else either of you would like to share with listeners by way of your background, uh, your personal context? Thanks for making us look so good. <laughs> <laughs> That's easy. <laughs> I'll say, you know, in many ways, um, someone told me once that every author is writing the same book over and over. And I think there's some truth to that. And I think in many ways, um, all the books I've done have, have kind of led up to this book. And it's it's kind of funny because the book, a book on fun is sure sounds frivolous. And, and uh, as uh, Inc. Magazine said, fun is frivolous, we know, unless you want to hire uh, and keep good people. <laughs> so, you know, it's, I think, especially given the times, and as you mentioned, coming off the pandemic, we're all itching to have more fun. It's gonna be the roaring 20s all over again. And if you want any hope for holding on to your employees and 5 million have left their job just in April, you better think, think twice about uh, what the environment is and, and how you can have more fun so that they wanna come to work and they wanna work with the people that are there and, and serve the customers you have. Just paying them is not enough. I don't think it ever was. <laughs> I'll add, I'll add to that. I'll, I'll say that um, I started off pretty young, <clears throat> knowing that was fun was very important. Uh, in the sixth grade, I was, I was the class clown at uh, St. Michael's Academy in San Diego. And, and now I'm finding the data is actually supporting what I was feeling intuitively, you know, back in the 1960s. Uh, I'll add this bit of, info, of uh, data is that Fortune Magazine comes out with the 100 best companies to work for. And in one of their recent surveys, they found for the, for the employees who work at these great companies, 82% of them said that they worked in a fun environment. Now for the companies that didn't make the list, they were good companies, but they didn't make the list. Only 62% of the employees said that they worked in a fun environment. So the bottom line, the main takeaway here is that uh, people who are having fun are also the highest performers and the highest performers are having the most fun. So it's two sides of the same coin. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I really appreciate that framing and that, that introduction. You both, I think, did a really good job of, of just briefly and succinctly uh, giving the business case for having fun at work. I, I suppose people could uh, think of it as frivolous, uh, the kind of the warm, the fluffy, the, you know, in, in HR, for example, for a long time, there was this, this uh, the stereotype, this conception that HR, they were either just the, the compliance p 
people, the paper um, and filing people, or they're the people trying to make everyone feel good. Um, and certainly there's elements of truth to both of those things, but uh, that's far be from the truth in terms of the total scope of, of the field of HR or organizational behavior, organizational development. And having fun has very real bottom line business impacts for organizations. If you want to attract and retain the best people, you have to have an engaging uh, high performance environment, which is built upon passion, fulfillment, uh, engagement, and all of that connects back to fun. Now, what I find fun may not be the same thing as what you know you term as fun, but ultimately if we each individually have a chance to tap in to our own energizing activities, then the sky's the limit in terms of what we can accomplish. So thank you for, for framing that for us. Um, let's launch into the first piece of this. I, I want to first start um, with us as individuals. So, you know, we go and we work in organizations and there's a culture, there's an environment there. We have leaders uh, and with their own leadership styles. And sometimes it's just not fun. Like sometimes it's kind of a crummy place to be what can I do as an individual finding myself in that kind of an environment, which may not be ideal, what can I do to bring fun, passion, fulfillment into my own work day, uh, even if all the stuff going on around me isn't great? Yeah, I'd say it starts with even a step before that and saying, if you're in an environment that really is not fun, um, is that where you want to be? <laughs> I think because there's certainly things you can do to make your job or any task more fun. But if it's going to be just this uphill battle the whole way, I think that's why 5 million people decided after the pandemic, hey, this isn't what I want to do. So at the root of it, you've got you to connect with what's important to you in your life and what gives you fulfillment and what you enjoy. And as you do that, and, and likely... Uh, you'll find other like-minded people doing the same thing, and that's a good fit. It has to be a fit between you and the culture of, of where you're working. Um, and so that's that's uh, now. Now that being said, if if it's not currently that that's not the case for you, and you're not able or, or ready to quit, I, I think there's a lot you can do individually uh, to uh, because we all have a choice. We all have a choice, really, on a daily basis to make. Can we make this a more fun day? What things can we do? And, and so don't, don't depend on always to be someone else's responsibility to make it fun for you. You, know, you can come to work and, and have fun and, and um, have a joke or, or, or if you're doing any given task. And we all have rote and boring tasks as part of what we do. We all have that, even if you have a job you love. But if I'm ever doing something like that, you, you can play a game with that. So, for example, you can set, set a timer for 20 minutes and see how fast you can get through it or, uh, you know, to make progress and then uh, to feel better about uh, the thing. Uh, you, you can uh, plan a reward for yourself, which could be taking a break, taking a walk, you know, or, or um, calling someone, a friend you haven't talked to in a long time. Um, so th those, are, those are a few. And, you know, I want to go back to one of the points you made, and that is that it's different for all of us. And probably one of the biggest, biggest things that learning for me in, in the research for this book with Mario was that. That, that fun is uh, all over the map. It's very wide range. And like I, if you'd asked me you know, before we started this, well, fun is, fun is when, it, when you're laughing, you know? And, but I find m my wife says, well, fun is when at the end of the day, you feel you had a good day. That's fun for her. I'm, I'm going, well, how can that be? Because fun is when you're laughing. <laughs> and so I found of all the hundreds of people we talked to, I don't think any two of them said the same thing. So it's a very diverse topic, which gives us more opportunity to tap into it. What, one of the things that we, we do mention in the book uh, and quite a bit is our fun principle. And that is to make sure that we make fun safe and fun for everyone. Uh, because everybody, you know, again, what's fun for some is, as you said, Jonathan, is not fun for others. And one of the things we strive for is never make anybody have fun. It's, They've got to decide, and we can't coerce them into doing that. But here's some examples. Uh, can, can I just really quick comment on that? Because yeah. thank you. Because some people are more introverted. Some people are more extroverted. I've been in environments where they try to force fun, uh, right, by doing some sort of like putting you on the spot. Oh. And, it's, and it's just, it makes you so, like, at least for me, I'm more introverted. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so it just makes me uncomfortable. And I'm just like dying inside waiting for this 
to be over so I can get back to work. <laughs> and, yeah. and so that's the the opposite of what you want to try to do. So like you said, you make an inclusive environment where people can can engage in their own way, uh, right. th then that's that's the good starting point. And one of the best things that we try to practice is the platinum rule, which is give people what they need, what they value. Bob's been doing it for, I don't know, 30 years with his recognition work. And that's all about finding out what people like and then giving it to them, delivering it to them. So that's one of when the- When they perform. So it's not when they perform, nice. yes. <laughs> yeah, everything's got to, to make sense for the business here. But here's a couple of examples. Uh, one person we know will uh, you know, add some, some nice quotes, some fun quotes or jokes at the bottom of their signature on an email. Uh, we know another person who changes her, her whole mental framework for it. She, she changed her to-do list to the fun list. And so she adds some fun things to do in there as well. But now her perspective is, I'm going to enjoy this. I'm, I'm, you know, I don't care what it is, but I'm going to find a way to enjoy it. And I so, get to do it. It's not, I don't have to do it. I get to do it. Exactly. So it's, it's, instead of being a victim at work, we're trying to get people to be proactive and make the most that they can. If they're going to be spending X amount of days on Zoom or even being, being able to go back physically to work, now we got to make sure that it's it's a it's going to be a great environment. We used to say when Bob and I worked at Blanchard, hey, if you're not having fun at work, find something fun to do or go home. And you know, Ken Ken started that off with this as well. But um, and we we believe it. We we've been embodying that you know for 30 years. Another thing people can do is something as easy as come in and and uh, pop popcorn. We know a, a woman who's the assistant to the police chief in Pocatello, Idaho, who has done that and it's become a tradition there and pe people smell the aroma and they all gather together and it, it uh, really makes a big difference. Little uh, things. She yeah. also has little toys on her desk that she gives people for different things. Little things, you know, and, and little things add up and and people love to stop by her desk and, and chat and you know, for that reason. So but she's, she's bringing that, she's really bringing that culture to, personally to the organization. Yeah. Now, you, oh, go oh, ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say leaders, you know, leaders can take a, a, a real big um, responsibility here. And when, when you see somebody up the, up the food chain having fun, it, it, it just makes it a lot easier for people in the organization to do it as well. There was a guy that worked, a uh, CEO worked for the hire corporation, and he, he found that one of his uh, folks was not getting good sleep. So he went out and got some really plush um, feather pillows for this person so that they could just go to sleep and enjoy their sleep. Another time he found one of his workers was working outside at a, at a market and, and what they did is they, they just bought him a jacket and he's, he says, man, this is great. So like you said before, some people might consider that may not consider that fun, but these people did, they knew exactly what they wanted. They got it. And, and then things snowballed. And, and I think the things that the examples that Mario just gave just reflect that, you know, it's, it's got to start with a little thoughtfulness. And so, which means it's got to start with knowing your people, which means it's got to start with getting to know your people. So if you, don't, if you never take that step, you're, you're never going to be able to connect with them. We, I, I know one story of a, of a general manager of a plant that every once a month, he'd walk around the, the plant and, and shake everyone's hand. And, and uh, this one guy goes, uh, Joe, yeah, well, well, how's the wife and kids? Well, sir, I'm still not married. <laughs> and he basically alienated himself because he's just going through the motions. It's got to be from the heart to take time to get to know people. Yeah, absolutely. And so you've done a good job of transitioning into what leaders can do here. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about that in just a moment, but just a couple examples from my own life. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, you know, I look back and, and there were lots of people that influenced me, lots of mentors, lots of authors. Um, but I look back, for example, to Bob, some of your books that I was aware of um, in my early 20s, and I suspect that they influenced some of the way I approach things. So I am more introverted, um, but I, I, I look for ways to, to have fun at work and to, to connect to those things. So I just have silly things. I'm a pr professor and a consultant. So I'm like at the university in my um, office and I have an, a basketball hoop on the door and I have like little <laughs> weird knickknacks and I, you know, people come by my office and some of the other professors kind of think I'm unprofessional <laughs> mm. because I'm, I'm different than the traditional academic culture. Um, but most of the students think it's great. 
And some of the professors think it's great. And so, you know, I have to navigate that a little bit um, in terms of just the, the culture of higher ed. Um, but, but it makes my office an enjoyable place to be. Like, I don't dread being there. It's not this sterile place where I just have books and, and stacks of paper a mile high. But it's, it's a place where I, I enjoy being. I have like a, a standing desk and a mini elliptical. So I could just like be moving while I'm working. Stuff nice. like that. Uh, little small things. And I don't know uh, if anyone's watching the video and not listening to the podcast, you might be able to see my t-shirt. Uh -huh. um, I'm a big believer in wearing fun things. And so I, my t-shirt says Norwals don't get mad, they get even. And it shows a Norwal um, stabbing a fisherman. Uh, you know, so I mean, it's such a dumb shirt, right? But so are there times that I wear a suit? Absolutely. But if I'm not doing something that requires me to be more dressed up, then mm -hmm. I am a full believer in like be be comfortable and have fun. Mm -hmm. um, a, another example I was thinking of, this is from a long time ago, back before college, I had spent a little bit of time abroad uh, after high school. And then I came back and I needed to save up a little bit more money to go uh, start college. And I was living in rural Missouri. There's not a lot of work out there and um, not a lot of like great paying work. The best place to be was at the factory. So I was at this factory, hot, grimy, um, really physical work. And just not, you know, a, a wonderful place to be, but I had to light at the end of the tunnel. I knew if I could do this for six months, I can save up money. I can go off to school. Mm -hmm. And, uh, the, it was a really kind of mind numbing job, it, it, you know, it, but it set the stage for me and I had a, an end goal and I was able to, to get through it and then move on. But one of the things that I did, and I think Bob and Mara, you both kind of comment on this earlier is I just tried to make a game of it. Uh, right. I tried every day when I went to work 10 hour shifts, um, you know, I would challenge myself to, to do a little bit more, a little bit better than I did the day before, or I, I break it into 30 minute increments. What can I do during this time? Um, and over time I got very efficient. I got very, um, uh, good at what I was doing and enough so that I, I was able to free up time on my area of the assembly line. So I could go help other people. I could go, like, I, I learned how to weld, even though that wasn't part of my job, just because I had, t I had time, you know, <laughs> Um, I got my stuff done. I could go over to the welders and help them and learn how to weld. So things like that, like it was a crummy job. It was like one of the worst jobs I ever had. They didn't pay well. They didn't treat people well. It was hot, you know, uh, humid Midwest, uh, hot, humid Midwest summers. But, you know, it, it was, it, it was okay. And I got through it. And I think, like you said, Bob earlier, sometimes uh, we're not in a position where we can go somewhere else. We have to make the best of where we're at. And at other times we do have a choice. And if we have a choice, then we absolutely should try to align ourselves with organizations that are a good fit for who we are. So anyways, a, a few examples from my own life. Okay, uh, Martin, you could have wrote, wrote this on. book. You could have wrote this book, Jonathan. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> we'll bring That's you the next edition. <laughs> By the way, I just wanted to show you that this is one of the things that I have in my office that, that helps me. And, and that's a real popular thing today, especially with the, with the Zoom is people are including their their dogs and their pets in their meetings they're introducing them and they're just getting real creative i mean you just have to be super creative and, and encourage people to be open-minded and try new things we have a said. whole chapter on on pets in the in the book and mm. it, it, research indicates that if you have a dog that's in your office you, you're less stressed <laughs> you, know, you pet the dog you feel less stressed proven you know so uh, other people are, are glad to see it. It makes people in a good mood. And, and so there's, there's uh, all these little aspects can add up. You can, you can chip away at it. I, you know, your story about the factory reminded me of, I worked with a company where they, the employees created an award uh, for uh, a senior leader that they would, they would uh, vote for every quarter for the best, best leader in the company, an employee award. And what the award was, was the leader got to spend a whole day working side by side with the factory workers. And they had this vice president he's down on the line. He goes, God, it's, it's hot as hell here. How do you guys get anything done? He goes, well, so we've been complaining about the air conditioning for months. <laughs> the next day it got fixed. <laughs> so you can be smart about it, you know, and rope in, rope in your leaders, rope in your managers. I, I, I love to, I know, you know, you, you can have a personal challenge to, you got a grumpy manager, make it a, a point that you're going to get him to crack a smile every day, you know, <laughs> and uh, I, I love doing that with, uh, I just love like when I'm not shopping or a restaurant, I, I don't give up until I can make the, the, 
the server or the cashier uh, a smile or, or, or laugh about something. So it's a simple thing, but it's, it's kind of fun to do. Now, one other example we have is there's a guy named Bob Small. He, he was an executive with the Disney, at Disney World in Florida. And what he would do is on Christmas Eve, he would go down to the uh, laundry room and he would work with the, with the housekeeping staff. And he says, you know, if you guys have to be here, I'm going to be here too. And so he's there cracking jokes and he was doing that. And it became a tradition where every Christmas Eve, he would, he would work with the folks and it, it, it just lightens the load and people say, hey, everybody here, no matter the title, we're all in this together. And so we're going to enjoy it. Yeah, the, the genuine connections, the genuine relationships, like you said, getting to know your people so you know what they need, what they want, what's going to be motivating to them, uh, what what they, you know, what's fulfilling to them, because what's fulfilling to me may not be fulfilling to somebody else. Exactly. Um, you know, I I I'm I love like internal personal competition. Um, mm -hmm. That's a good motivator for me. But the second there's like some external mechanism of competition with the team, I hate that. I just mm -hmm. I for me it's stupid. Uh, and so that it, it demotivates me. So, but other people it works great for. So you just have to, you know, recognize those things and, and, and then try to create, you know, an environment where hopefully as many people have an opportunity every day to do mm -hmm. something fun and engaging, inspiring, uh, that connects with their, yeah, their so, passion. So you'd rather work with the team than compete with the team. And, and exactly. so now if a, a leader in that area, a smart <laughs> leader would say, well, we'll do it both ways. And if those that want to be in a competition, we're going to have a prize for the, the fastest or the best. And for those that, that uh, don't, we're going to start a collaboration award, you know, and there's no matter what the environment, you can find ways to make it happen. Going back to to Disney, uh, I worked with Disney for 15 years, and a lot of people don't know that twice a year they sh they close the theme parks, and they invite everyone, all employees, to come with their families to experience where they work. And all the managers serve the concessions, wear the costumes, run the rides, and just like that, they say we're all in it together. And that's why it's the happiest place on earth. You know? yeah. So uh, a few thoughtful things that they implement well uh, over the last 50 years and consistently uh, can go a long, long way. Yeah, so one absolutely. of the keys, one of the keys there is the learnings that they have over the 50 years or so. And that's what a smart manager, smart leader is going to do is they're going to, they're going to experiment. They're going to try things and they're going to switch it up. One of the things we recommend is always switch things up. So you're not getting stuck by having the same type of fun all the time, unless that's what people are really looking forward to. Well, there's so, a oh, I was just going to add that the companies have committees and it's their job to always have the hand on the, on the pulse, what's going on and to offer something that's unexpected, something new. Some companies even have VPs of fun now. I mean, it's, it, they're taking it, they're taking fun seriously. So Bob, you were going to say? You've got to keep it fresh. And and if you're if you're doing the same thing over and over, you know, end of the year holiday party, you know, <laughs> every year, you know, or or summer picnic every year, same old thing. Uh, that we have a word for that. It's called boring. <laughs> you've got you've got to shake it up. You got to try something different. I had uh, in in the book we we talk about a CEO that that would um, pick the company events to do, and he said no matter what he picked, no one seemed to ever enjoy it, be happy with it. And, and he gave it to another executive to do the same results. Finally, he went to a, a millennial and said, can you, can you set this up? And, and the guy used uh, social media tools to survey people. They, they picked something everyone wanted to do. They, they ended up doing something they never did before. They did a, one of these medieval uh, nights with a show and a dinner. And, and everyone loved it. The kids loved it. The families, uh, everyone loved it. And so, you know, the, the CEO had good intentions, but he was trying too hard, pushing himself to find the answer and, and loose and let someone else that has a different energy make it happen. Yeah, I, absolutely. I, I, I'm working with the president of the ACD division of L'Oreal USA now. And when she was working for one of her, her brands uh, in the past, this was, uh, after they, she got her team together to have a boxing outing, an actual, you know, gloves and the whole bit. She says, you know, we, we've been working really hard. We need to cut off some, uh, cut, cut some stress. And uh, we need to just uh, work on things and, and, and hammer some things out. <laughs> and uh, they had a ton of fun doing that. So again, very creative. Not that many people put the mouthpiece in and, and go at it with, you know, with their coworkers, but uh, they had a lot of fun. <laughs>
could you pick who you got to fight? <laughs> <laughs> that I don't know. <laughs> I'd have to ask her. I'll ask her next time I talk to her in a couple of weeks. <laughs> so, so this is all great. Um, as we talked about at the very beginning, we have, we're just starting to come out of this, you know, past 15, 16 plus months of the pandemic environment. And it's been mm -hmm. a tough time and many people have been working virtually. And how do you do this? But when like, it's like we're doing right now, you're in San Diego, I'm in Utah. Mm -hmm. um, how do we have fun when we're not together in the same place? How do we do activities when we're not together? Well, we're, we're having fun. So there is part of what you're talking about. And and one of the, and Miles heard me say this before, one of, the, one of the things I love doing, and you can do this virtually, it's very easy. It's called a praise barrage, where whenever you get together with your team, hey, let's, let's take a, I want to do something different, start a little differently. And uh, we want to do a praise barrage. As we go around our, our team, I'm going to call someone's name. I want everyone else to say 100% positive things about what you enjoy working with that person about. Let's start with John, then Mary. Than, than Joe. And you, know, you take, take five, 10 minutes to do that. You can't help but do a surge of, have a surge of energy and pride that comes from that. And I tell you what, for others to see uh, what they, the people they work with, what they value in their contribution is a very powerful thing. And, I get, and they will do more of those things, I guarantee it. Uh, so that, that's a fun, that's a simple thing. You can also do it face-to-face -face with the index cards. You know, write, write people a thank you that you owe and you get, you get five or six thank yous from people that you work with about what they appreciate, things you've done. I tell you, that's valuable, valuable feedback that most of us don't get. So here's another example, Jonathan. Um, there, there's a company here in San Diego called To Connect, and what they've done is they will plan ahead and they let people know, hey, on, on this date, we're all going to get together and, show, and share our artwork. What artwork? Well, we want you to pick a famous piece of art, whether it's a sculpture or a painting, and we want you to recreate that with objects that you have at home or photos and this and that. And it was amazing when they all got together, you know, they had the scream and all these other famous paintings and the people really came up with things that, that look just like these things. Um, you know, another time they had, um, guess who's the baby picture? So they, they would show different baby pictures of, of, of the staff, and then they'd all have to figure out who changed the least and who should have stayed the same. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, one, one word about that, then, that reminds me is when we're having fun, we want to make sure that we're not having fun at other people's expense. And one of the things that Bob and I write about in the book is we're not, we're not big believers of pranks because most often they fail and somebody gets hurt. And that's not, and that's not making it safe. And yeah, fun. someone can't be the, the brunt of the joke. That's not good. You're not gonna you're gonna ruin the relationship with them, and probably for the whole team if everyone laughs at them, you know. So, and so it rule that one out. There's yeah. enough you can do without that. Now, there's another example of great virtual fun. It involves food because everybody loves food. So I know a company that will send out a pancake making kit to their uh, staff. And then, and then everybody makes their own version of a pancake. They share it. They all eat it together. Um, and some of them even sent the stuff over to other people. It, uh, so again, you can be so creative and just tweak things that you hear about somebody else doing. By the way, the book has over 400 uh, low cost and no cost items. And as Bob says, hey, if you turn to a page and you don't find something for your, for your group or your team or yourself on this page, just turn the page because it's going to be on the next page. My, my wife's uh, my wife's team. They they uh, a few weeks ago they did a thing where everyone shared a favorite vacation photo, and it was really fun. Again, you get to know people a little bit better. They had they had one uh, one young kid. He he'd only had worked at this company during the whole pandemic, so he hadn't traveled anywhere. So he did this whole thing with uh, Google 3D where he put wild animals in his apartment and he was like cowering from it and stuff. It was really fun. Yeah, so let's get creative. You know, if you're if you're used to doing things at work, where you're, like you're doing a a working lunch, for example, and you're getting everyone together paying for food, maybe you you DoorDash and send food out to everyone at their home office, right? Or I did I did something where we we decorate we sent um, cupcake decorating kits out to everybody, and then everyone decorated cupcakes, and then we had like a little contest to see you know different categories and things of of people's yeah. cupcakes. Uh, we did a, vir a virtual holiday um, gathering um, this past December and ugly 
uh, Christmas sweater contest and, you know, those sorts of things. Like there's lots, lots of fun things like that, that you can do that don't take a whole lot of time or planning. They don't really cost much of anything. Um, but, but people get a kick out of them and, you know, it, it just builds camaraderie. So I, I think anytime we have a chance to do something like that, just taking a little bit of time to think about it, um, tap in, you, you know, don't put all the pressure on yourself. Uh, maybe I'm not the most creative person in the world. Tap into the creativity of your people and see what they want to do. And then, you know, what's amazing things. about that, Jonathan, is when you start to involve people who have had mundane or quote unquote boring jobs and you give them a creative outlet, they go nuts with it. Then their job becomes the most important thing for them. They can't wait to get to work because they get to work on another part of themselves, which is their spiritual part. You know, it's, it's the emotional part that really drives them to do the things that they do. So you're right on the money with that. Also <laughs> research shows that when we, we get a chance to do something just even very, very simple that's, that's creative, it kind of unleashes another, another whole side of our brain that, makes, that we can bring to bear to the, the work we're doing. So uh, there's, there's, again, a lot to be said for just a silly little exercise or a game or a team building type thing. Um, and, and Mario and I love doing that type of stuff with the groups. Perfect. Well, Mario and Bob, it has been a real pleasure. I'm, I'm just noting the time. Time has flown by because we're having fun. Um, <laughs> but before we close for today, I did want to give you a chance to share with listeners how they can get connected with each of you, um, how, you know, where, where they can find out more about your work, your books, uh, and then give us the final word on the topic for today. Sure. Well, uh, my, my website is www.drbobnelson.com. That's D-R-B-O-B-N-E-L-S-O-N.com. And among other things, um, uh, topics I present, uh, consulting I do, uh, I've got an online store that, that has this book at a discounted price, cheaper than Amazon, and, and most of the other books I've done as well. Yes, it's a, the book is available at your favorite bookseller. Um, you can get an audio book, you can get an e-book, you can get the paperback. Um, uh, you, you can get a hold of me at tamayogroup.com. Um, I spend a lot of my time uh, having fun, uh, helping people to be better leaders, better executives, and um, also to be better presenters. Um, I think that my bottom line here is, again, uh, life, is, life is very short. We spend a lot of time at work. Why not have the most, make the most of it and have some fun doing uh, what we do to contribute to help other people? So, and, and know that it is it is possible. Don't say, ah, not where I work, not with my boss. Yeah, it is possible. And Gra grassroots can be very powerful. Um, you don't even have to be creative, you know. And uh, like, for example, I'm an introvert as well. You know, people can't believe that, but I really am. <laughs> you know, you too. Yeah. Uh, you know, writing's a very internal <clears throat> processing thing, but uh, you learn. You can learn. You can learn to be extrovert. You can learn to do fun things. You can force yourself to learn how to tell a joke, you know, and um, it, it's, it's uh, kind of, the, the journey's kind of fun to do it as well. Even if you're telling yourself a joke in front of a mirror, because um, you can have fun by yourself, definitely. Yeah, and I, I, I have gotten very good at telling really lame dad jokes, so <laughs> that's about the extent of it for me. Well, Mario and Bob, it has been a real pleasure. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedules to meet with me, to have this conversation and to share your insights with my listeners. I encourage listeners to reach out, get connected, uh, find out more about what they can do for you. Check out their book, uh, their many books. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. 